Welcome back guys. After discussing descending limb of loop of Henle and ascending limb of loop of Henle, let's now discuss about the digital convoluted tubule. Here I am showing you a very simplified image of a digital convoluted tubule or DCT. The first point to be noted here are these green color cells. So what are these green color cells? So these cells which are present in the proximal portion of the DCT. Okay, proximal part are the earliest part of DCT. So these cells are known as macula densa. Here MD represents macula densa. We have already discussed what is the function of macula densa in our earlier videos. Now after this, you can appreciate this blue color cell, okay, which is present on the distal convoluted tubule. This is nothing but the epithelial cell of the distal convoluted tubule. I want you to know that, see, this membrane, this blue color membrane, so this side of this epithelial cell is the basolateral side, okay, this is the basolateral membrane of the epithelial cell and this yellow color side, this side is the luminal side. So this is the luminal side of the epithelial cell and this side is the basolateral side of the epithelial cell. Why I am saying this is because, see there are certain transporters, this is 1 and 2, transporter number 1 and 2 which are present on the luminal membrane of this epithelial cell and there is one more transporter which is present on the basolateral membrane of this epithelial cell. What are these transporters and what are their function? Guys, see, the first transporter which we are going to discuss on the DCT is reabsorbing sodium along with the chloride ions. So, sodium and chloride are being reabsorbed in the DCT with the help of this transporter. So, can we call this transporter as sodium chloride symporter? Yes. So, sodium chloride symporter is present in DCT. Remember, we have discussed about sodium potassium 2 chloride symporter which is present in the ascending limb of loop of Henle. That's totally different and this is totally different. Okay. So, our number one transporter is reabsorbing sodium along with chloride ions and this is symporter. Why? Because the moment of ions is in same direction. The second type of transporter is reabsorbing calcium. Okay. So, this is calcium reabsorbing transporter. There is other name which we will discuss. So, this transporter is reabsorbing the calcium. See, this calcium reabsorption is totally ATP dependent. So, we, by using ATP, which is an active process, by using ATP, the calcium is being reabsorbed from the urinary ultrafiltrate. Now, the third transporter, what it is doing? It is going to exchange this calcium for sodium. Okay, so whatever the calcium is being reabsorbed, now this calcium need to go into the blood. So this calcium, whatever is coming into the cell, it have to go into the blood. So for every calcium, sodium is being taken into the cell. So this is exchanger or antiporter. So sodium, calcium, antiporter is present on the basolateral membrane. Now, here, I want you to know a few more important points. What are they? See, we know that in the body, calcium metabolism or calcium homeostasis is maintained by which hormone? Parathyroid hormone. We know that. So, whenever, whenever a person is suffering with hypocalcemia, for example, Okay, the calcium levels are going down. If calcium levels are going down means that will cause hypocalcemia. Let's write the person is having now hypocalcemic states. Okay, he is having hypocalcemia. Now, when the person is having hypocalcemia, which glands will be activated? The parathyroid glands will be activated. And parathyroid glands are going to produce which hormone? Parathyroid hormone. Now, what is the function of parathyroid hormone? Whenever the blood calcium levels are going down, below the normal, this blood level of calcium need to be elevated. Who is going to do that? Parathyroid hormone and how it is going to do that? By many ways, one such way is this parathyroid hormone, it will come and activate this transporter. A parathyroid hormone is going to activate this calcium transporting channel. So, more and more calcium is going to be reabsorbed and all this calcium is going to be kept back in the blood which increases the blood calcium levels. Okay. So, important point is that parathyroid hormone regulates the reabsorption of a calcium. I want you to know now it's not only the parathyroid hormone, even vitamin D can activate this transporter. 
what is the name of this transporter if someone comes comes to you and ask you the name of this transporter which is reabsorbing the calcium that's known as trp v5 trp means transport receptor potential veniloid channel 5 transport receptor potential veniloid channel 5 is present on the luminal surface of the epithelial cell which is present on the distal convoluted tubule and it is under the control of parathyroid hormone and vitamin D helps in reabsorption of calcium and maintains the blood levels of calcium. What are the other two transporters which are present on the epithelial cells of DCT? The other two transporters are sodium chloride symporter and sodium calcium exchanger which is present on the basolateral membrane. See the sodium calcium exchanger this is present on the basolateral membrane we have discussed. It is present on the basolateral membrane. Sodium chloride symporter is present on the luminal membrane. And this channel is also known as TRP, this channel, okay. So, this one, this channel, this channel is known as TRP V5, okay. Now, I have already discussed this, TRP V5 is controlled by parathyroid hormone and vitamin D. Let's see a few more important points regarding this digital convoluted tubule. Guys, I have already discussed sodium potassium 2 chloride symporter which is present on the ascending limb of loop of Henle. It is blocked by which, which kind of drugs? Loop diuretics. Loop diuretics block sodium potassium 2 chloride symporter in ascending limb of loop of Henle. In the same way, this sodium chloride symporter can also be blocked. It can also be blocked by which drugs? So, these drugs are known as thiazides. Okay, thiazide diuretics. Okay, so thiazide diuretics are going to block sodium chloride symporter. See why we are calling it as diuretics because if you give thiazide diuretics, the sodium chloride symporter is going to be blocked. If sodium chloride symporter is blocked means sodium reabsorption is not happening. If sodium is not getting reabsorbed, all this sodium is going to lost in the urine. So water will fall on the sodium and this water is going to come out in the form of urine. So that's why we are calling this as a diuretics. Again, I am repeating this for you. For example, please concentrate. If I use a drug called as thiazide diuretic, thiazide diuretics are going to act on this place. So what's happening? Sodium reabsorption is happening or not? Sodium reabsorption is not happening and even chlorine reabsorption is not happening. All this sodium and chlorine they are going to lose in the urine. If they are lost in the urine, if they are going into the urine, even water will follow the solutes and this water is going to come out, this excessive water, this excess water. So, it is causing diuresis, thiazide diuretics acts on the sodium chloride symporter. Now, for example, if there is a, this one person in whom this sodium chloride symporters got mutated, because of some reason, sodium chloride symporters got mutated. That will cause which syndrome? Gittleman syndrome. Also remember, if there is a mutation of sodium potassium 2 chloride symporter in ascending limb of loop of Henle, that will cause Barter syndrome. Now, what exactly is Gittleman syndrome? Gittleman syndrome is a condition where there is a mutation of mutation of sodium chloride symporter. Okay. Now, this Gittleman syndrome, it resembles which, uh, which condition? For example, I am just asking you, in Gittleman syndrome, which transporters are getting affected? Sodium chloride symporters. And if you take thiazide diuretics, for example, in thiazide diuretic usage also, sodium chloride symporters are getting blocked. So, in both the condition, the receptor, the, the transporters that are getting affected are sodium chloride symporters. So, Gittleman syndrome, it resembles thiazide diuretic over usage. Okay, but because in both the conditions, the same transporter that is getting affected. Now, after this, let us see a few important differences between proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule. I have said you even in the beginning of the lecture that proximal convoluted tubule is highly active. 
it helps in reabsorption of most of the substances. To reabsorb most of the substances, it need to have a lot of surface area. For getting a lot of surface area, there is this brush border. So in proximal convoluted tubule, there is a brush border. But in distal convoluted tubule, there is no brush border. So that is the first difference. Proximal convoluted tubule cells, they have brush border. And DCT, there is no brush border. And in proximal convoluted tubule, for example, if I show something like this, imagine that this is a proximal convoluted tubule. These are the epithelial cells of the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule are epithelial cells. In between the cells, in between the cells, there are no tight junctions. There is gap junction present. Yeah, there, there are no tight junctions, but gaps are present. As there are gaps, so easily water can be reabsorbed in this route. So this route is known as a paracellular route. Paracellular means in between the cells, side to the cells. So water reabsorption is possible via paracellular route. Why? Because leaky junctions are there. Okay. There are no tight junctions. Leaky junctions are there. So paracellular route of water reabsorption is possible. And just for now, trust me that in the lumen here, in the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule, there is this one enzyme present known as carbonic anhydrase. So, we will discuss in detail about this carbonic anhydrase. What is the function of this carbonic anhydrase at the end of this chapter? But for now, remember in proximal convoluted tubule, there is this one enzyme present called as carbonic anhydrase. Which type of carbonic anhydrase is present? Carbonic anhydrase type 2 and 4 are present. But in DCT, which type of carbonic anhydrase is present? Only type 2 carbonic anhydrase is present in DCT. But in PCT, there are both type 2 and type 4 carbonic anhydrases. We have discussed all the important points regarding the distal convoluted tubule. Now let's go on to collecting ducts.